Hello all, I'm happy to announce that I'm starting a monthly Patreon-exclusive podcast called Name News, where I will be rambling about all the name-related news of the previous month. I thought I'd share the first installment of it here so everyone can listen to it and see if they enjoy it. If you'd like to carry on listening, then please consider donating just $1 a month on Patreon. That will give you access to the Name News podcast every month, loads of other rewards, and really help support the channel. Anyway, enjoy! Hello all, I hope you're doing well and welcome to Name News, a monthly patron-exclusive podcast from Name Explain, releasing on the first Wednesday of every month, where we look back on all the name-related news stories from the month just past. I am your host Patrick and I'm so excited to be here with you all. Um, I'm really happy to finally get this going. I've been toying with the idea of a patron-exclusive podcast for some time now and this is what I wanted to make it. I had all kinds of ideas for what it could be. And this this is it. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know how much I enjoy doing name news. And when I say doing name news, I mean just the retweeting name-related news stories of some uh, emo- siren emojis and shouting name news in the uh, in the in the tw- in the tweet about it. So and this is the next form of name news. I've always wanted to do something a bit more topical. I thought about maybe doing this as a live stream on the YouTube channel, but I've sort of settled on this idea. And I think it's going to be really fun to look into some uh, name-related news stories from the month just being. So as I said, this is going to be a monthly uh, exclusive uh, podcast just for you patrons. Though this first episode might go live to uh, the YouTube channel as well. Just to show people if they're interested, here's episode one if you want them more support on patreon it'll just cost a dollar it's only going to be at the dollar t you don't have to pay any more than that to enjoy this podcast i think that's fair and by golly this is the best uh, month to start it in because there's been loads of name related news stories in january i'm uh, a rambling for some time now so we should get onto it for a while and of course joining me on this adventure is no one this is just myself this is a one person podcast um I don't know how popular one-person podcasts are. I've listened to a few. Obviously, I do do a two-person podcast with a uh, Paul for AD History. You can go listen to that. Of course, that's really good fun. Seriously, go 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 listen to it. It's amazing. But um, one-person podcasts. I'm not sure how popular they are. Um, I don't know how boring it's going to be. You just hear me drone on for um, however long this is going to take. I'm hoping it will be half an hour. If it's any longer, if it's any shorter. Well, no, you'll know, you'll see the time frame on how long this podcast is. But if you get bored by that, then I'm really sorry. I'm thinking about getting a co-host in the future, um, even for every episode, maybe for just one or two episodes every now and then. There's some, uh, there's a few people I have in mind for it. But for now, it's just me, if that's okay with you all. Think of it as like one of the sort of one people radio shows. And it's not just me anyway. You're here listening as well. I'm sure you can try and talk back to me. I can't promise I'll respond, but... You can clearly see I have a very poor grasp on how this whole podcasting thing works. Paul normally does all the important stuff, bless him, on AD history. I just turn up and talk for a bit. But no, anyway, this is name news. This is just me talking to you guys, my lovely patrons who are kind enough to support me on a monthly basis through Patreon from $1 to $100 a month. It's amazing. Thank you all. So let's get into this. And of course, perhaps the biggest uh, name related news story of the month at least here in blighty anyway has to be this one from the bbc harry and megan drop royal duties and hrh titles the article goes on to say prince harry and meghan will no longer use their hrh titles and will not receive public funds for royal duties buckingham palace has announced the couple will no longer formally represent the queen the duke and duchess of sussex intend to pay 2.4 million pounds of taxpayer money for the refurbishments of frogmore cottage which will remain their uk family home the statement added the new arrangement comes into effect in spring this year the palace said the article goes on to say the statement comes after the queen held talks with the couple on monday about their future following their announcement they wanted to step back as senior royals and divide their time between the uk and canada the queen said following many months of conversations and more recent discussions she was pleased that together we have found a constructive and supportive way forward for my grandson and his family harry Meghan, and archie will always be much loved members of my family the statement continued In a separate statement, Buckingham Palace said the Sussexes will not use their HRH titles as they are no longer working members of the royal family. 
Uh, finally, the article adds, HRH, an abbreviation for his slash her royal highness, is used as part of the title for some members of the royal family. So, obviously, this is a huge, huge news story that is about way more than just names. Um, it's not even about names, it's about titles, I guess, but titles and names, uh, potato, patata, that sort of thing. Who actually says patata? I should make a video about that. Anyway, um, this is a huge story. This is really quite unprecedented of a royal sort of stepping away like this. Um, we had the abdication of King Edward. I want to say, oh, I should know this. I don't really know my uh, British kings and queens, despite being one of their subjects. Um, he abdicated because he wanted to marry the American lady. I've forgotten her name as well. That's quite bad of me, but this is somewhat different. It appeared that to begin with, they wanted to be sort of half in, half out of the royal family. But it's come to the decision that they're fully out of the royal family. Um, I've actually made a whole video about this uh, situation. That's probably on the channel by now, by the time you're listening into this. Um, so I'd really recommend go checking that out for the full sort of story. But it's just interesting. It seems the main reason they uh, wanted to step away from the royal family. Um, well, I've seen all kinds of reasons as to why they wanted to do it. I've seen sort of like tabloids going, oh, they're jealous of Will and Charles. But I think that's just a bit of rubbish, really. I think the primary reason is to avoid the tabloid. Uh, Meghan's been very outspoken about how harsh and critical the awful, awful British tabloids have been on her. And Harry, there's a great BuzzFeed article showing um, how Kate and Meghan were treated differently when um, when it came to the exact doing the exact same things. It's crazy. It's like there's an article of Kate holding her baby bump, and a certain tabloid has written, "Look how lovely she looks, getting ready." And Meghan was doing the exact same thing, saying, "Why is she doing this? What new age reason is this?" And it's just awful. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the royal family. I quite respect what these guys are doing of stepping away from it. Um, I think the outside perspective has maybe helped as well. Megan being American, um, just going, this is kind of weird what your family does. Do you know that? This is this is odd. I don't want this. That's just my own interpretation of the matters. That's what I like to think's happened. She's just gone, Harry, this is weird. Like... <laughs> Harry has never noticed his entire life has been spent in this royal bubble and finally someone from outside that bubble has entered that bubble and told him it's a bit odd like I said that's just my own interpretation I have no evidence based on that theory it's just a funny idea I had about it all but we don't really know what the ramifications of this are going to be it, it, it could be anything there's more than just their title going and i guess we should talk about that more primarily here the hrh title is used by primarily the senior royal so charles or camilla will kate harry and Meghan, no more and it's only given to sort of those select top echelons so harry harry and Meghan are still going to keep like prince and princess though Meghan doesn't really use princess um and of course they'll still keep duke and duchess of sussex which is really good because man i need my duke and duchess i'm a sussex boy if if i don't have them it's going to go to pop down here it's going to be like the purge or something crazy um maybe anyway it's already kind of like that anyway joking sussex is a lovely part of the world um so it's going to be interesting how they're going to continue with their lives going forward what role this is going to take i personally think by work what are they going to do for work that's the whole big thing how they can become financially independent in all of this and i think it's going to kind of be like what i do um they have an instagram account i believe together I think they're going to influence as much as possible. I wouldn't I wouldn't even be surprised they started a vlog, you know. Um they could be massive on YouTube or especially on Instagram, on Twitter. Just all sorts of things like that. Uh, they they trademark Sussex Royal, I believe, and they want to use that on all kinds of things. Um yeah, I I part of me generally wishes them the best, especially with the whole they want to pay back um the £2.4 million of taxpayer money for the refurbishment of Frogmore Cottage. That was a real big news story. So Frogmore Cottage is part of a big royal estate. Um, I believe initially it was five small cottages, and they used taxpayer money to mush it into one big house, which is kind of ridiculous. I remember being really like, what? Like, how are they doing that? How is the country in so much trouble? How is the NHS 
in so much issues but 2.4 million go towards refurbing this cottage so to hear harry and megan want to repay that is really cool whether they actually do it or not is another uh another another question i'm sure maybe a year down the line we'll see harry and megan promoting ray's shadow legacy on their youtube channel um and that will probably cover it the amount they will get paid to uh, promote that awful game but that's the big title. That's the, uh, the, the the that's without that the biggest news story from uh, name related news story from January, definitely. And it makes sense. I don't know if I've already said this. They don't add the HRH title anymore because that's only used for the senior members of the royal family. If they don't want to be senior members of the royal family, then they don't really need that title, and they're probably quite happy about that. So, yep, that's the first big story of the uh, day I want to talk to you about. However, there are more news stories I want to cover here. And the next one is Disney drop Fox name from 20th Century Film Studios and Searchlight. This is an article from The Guardian. And they go on to say, After 85 years as one of the most famous names in Hollywood, Disney is calling time on the Fox in 20th Century Fox. With executives reportedly worried the name has become too closely associated with Rupert Murdoch's right-wing news channel. Variety reported Friday that 20th Century Fox Film Studio will become 20th Century Studios, and Fox Searchlight Pictures will become Searchlight Pictures. A remake of Swedish hit Force Majeure, starring Julia Lewis-Dreyfus and Will Ferrell, will next month become the first film released as a Fox to Searchlight production. Really sorry if I said that Swedish word wrong. Um, tell me how to say it correctly down in the comments or wherever. Sorry. Anyway, the article also carries on saying, Walt Disney brought most of Murdoch's entertainment assets last year in a $71.3 billion deal, including the 20th Century Fox Studio and Fox Searchlight. The Murdoch family kept control of Fox News and their sports business. The 20th Century Fox brand was formed by the merge of 20th Century Pictures and Fox Film Corporations in 1935. Its famous Searchlight logo has shone before some of the biggest movies in Hollywood history, including Alien, Avatar, Die Hard, Home Alone, and Planet of the Apes. So, this is a really interesting story. Um, <laughs> the first thing when I heard this is, what about all those Fox jokes in old episodes of The Simpsons? They're not going to make sense anymore. <laughs> that was the first thing that came to my mind about all this. Obviously, they will still make sense, because a lot of those jokes take aim at Fox News, and Rupert Murdoch particularly, and they are unfortunately still around. Mm, should I be showing this much political opinion on a podcast? Yeah, why not? They're going to still be around, so a lot of those jokes will still make sense. But it really is the end of an era. The 20th Century Fox, I think if you ask people to name uh, movie companies, that's on the first ones people come to mind, and that name isn't going to exist anymore. Like the article from The Guardian said, 85 years that's been around for. That's older than a lot of people on this planet. They wouldn't have known anything different than 20th Century Fox. And the Fox part is going, but I do understand completely why they're choosing to remove the Fox part of this convers- uh, of this uh, film studio's name. Because Fox has got a really negative connotation with certain people. Obviously, certain people love it, and you know, people are allowed to love it, I guess. But to a large majority of uh, the planet, Fox is a no-no, and it's too associated with Rupert Mur- Murdoch's Fox News. Fox Sports is okay, I guess. They currently got smacked down more on wrestling in a moment. Of course, I snuck in some wrestling news into this podcast. I always, I'm always going to find something wrestling related to talk about. So, um, yeah, that 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 seems to be the big deal. Um, how do I feel about it personally? I'm not too fast. Um, I imagine a lot of the other iconography will maintain the same. The famous introduction can easily be changed to have this name. Luckily, the introduction itself doesn't say 20th Century Fox, like, audibly, because then you'd have to change that, if that makes sense. Um, you can still get the classic... I won't go on saying more of it. So, I think they'll be just fine. People will adapt to change, and before you know it, People will forget her. Tw- it was called 20th Century Fox in the first place. It was only 85 years. I'm sure they're going to be around for another 85 years after that. And they'll be not 20th Century Fox longer than they were 20th Century Fox. It's just a big change. Um, I think it was somewhat inevitable as well. It was weird when Disney bought Fox. It, it's a huge deal. It's mind-blowing that a company could eat up another company like that. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um. But I think some things had to change, so it wasn't kind of like, this is another thing, they want it to be another branch 
of Disney in the same way Marvel and Pixar and Star Wars were sort of branches of Disney. And getting rid of the Fox part and just calling it 20th Century Studios, I think really helps shape that image that it's another asset of Disney as opposed to being like this side thing that is sort of part, it's not Disney and Fox, it's Disney owns Fox. It shows Disney are do superior over this. Maybe that's just my own interpretation of this all anyway. Who knows? Let's move on to our next story. And like I said, it's wrestling based. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about some wrestling right now. Um, like I said, I'm a huge wrestling fan, if you didn't know that already. And this article comes from Pro Wrestling Sheet. And it's called WWE Makes Changes Regarding to NXT Women's Championship. And the article goes on to say, Pro Wrestling Sheet has confirmed the NXT Women's Championship will simply be referred to as the NXT Championship going forward. PWI Insider first reported WWE has issued an internal decree to remove the gender-specific designation for NXT's titles for the foreseeable future. And the article goes on to say, as you may have seen, Becky Lynch, who is an amazing wrestler by the way, she's the uh, current uh, Raw Women's Champion, she suggested something like this during her appearance on WWE backstage this week. And she said, the best thing for the women's division right now is that we eliminate the term women's. I think that it's now starting to hold us back, she explained. Why do we need that division? We need people, we need characters, we need people looking for the main events, not the top women's spot, the top spot. And I could not agree more with Becky Lynch. I think this is a really awesome, interesting thing WWE have done. Um, it's interesting they've only done it with NXT's women's division so far. If you're unaware, um, WWE is the whole wrestling promotion and they have three main shows, Raw, SmackDown and NXT. Each one have their own sort of set of champions, their own tag team champions, their own women's champions, their own men's champions. It's only the NXT Women's Championship they've gotten rid of the women's part from. So Raw, it's still called the Raw Women's SmackDown, the Raw Women's Championship and the SmackDown Women's Championship. They're still called Women's Championships. We don't know if they're going to change in the future, but it makes sense. NXT was built to be WWE's testing ground. It's where a lot of the stars begin and then go on to the main roster. During more recent years, NXT's become considered main roster as well. It's a whole thing. You don't need to worry too much about it. You can just skip this part if you don't care for wrestling. Um, And I think this is great. I think this is really cool because it's always been women's champion. And there is something like Becky Lynch said... It does hold it back somewhat. And WWE, in recent years, have done some really cool things to elevate their women's uh, wrestlers, their women's division. F- like They were called Divas for the longest time, which was awful. And their, their matches were like two minutes. They were often seen by many as a lavatory break. And just last year, uh, women main evented WrestleMania for the first time, which is amazing. So they are doing some really cool stuff. Even just calling it the Women's Championship for uh, a few f- was a really good elevation for calling it the Divas Championship. Because Diva is just an awful term in wrestling. It, it, if you watch wrestling, you know. It's a bit confusing, however, because in NXT, there's now two NXT champions. There's the NXT champion Adam Cole, Bebe, and the NXT champion Rhea Ripley. Um, I've kind of had this idea myself, but kind of the opposite way. Instead of getting rid of the women, uh, part of the women's championship, they should have kept that but added men's to the men's championship. So it should be the NXT men's champion and the NXT women's champion. That kind of... It gives them two different names for the first thing, which makes things much easier to understand because having two different names does, does, would, would help out in something like this. Um, it makes things less confusing, but also it shows this one's for men, this one's for women. If they're just both called NXT Championship, it kind of makes things confusing. But I was listening to another podcast, Stephen Larson's Going Raw, amazing wrestling podcast, my favorite wrestling podcast. Um, they were saying that it probably won't get confusing because the championships are only ever going to be really talked about in context. So it'll be her uh, NXT championship or his NXT championship. Adam Cole will defend his NXT championship. So you're always going to know what championship is going to be talked about, really, on the whole. So I think that's fine. Um, I can understand why they didn't do men's and women's. They they sort of lower in the same way that the women's ch- calling it the women's championship lowers it as Becky Lynch mentioned calling it men's championship lowers that one as well somewhat. When you think what's the top championship? Is it the men's or women's? It kind of neither calling them both just NXT championship elevates them both in my eyes personally. I guess 
maybe that's my interpretation of it. Well, anyway, like I said, this is just a little story I wanted to talk about. WWE are always doing really weird things with names. Um, I have no doubt we'll be talking about them uh, going forward in this podcast. So, yep, that's another one. And our next story is um, more uh, political driven. And it's not really about a changing name. This is, uh, I just found this interesting. The article is called How Frank Biden Leveraged His Famous Name for Business Gain. And this is coming from ABC News. And in their article, they say, In 2009, the year Joe Biden took office as vice president, a local business executive met the politician's younger brother, Frank, at a Starbucks in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, and later asked him to become the president and frontman for a fledgling charter school venture. Frank Biden, a longtime real estate developer in the state, accepted the offer. And over the years, he touted his famous last name and prominent connections in Washington to help land the company a series of charter contracts from local officials in florida to open charter schools earning hundreds of thousands of dollars over a five-year period from the company in the process in media interviews at the time frank biden was unabashed calling his last name a tremendous asset because of the family's record of taking care of people who need help and telling people it brought him automatic acceptance as he sought government approvals for the for-profit mavericks in education. Claims of mismanagement would ultimately bog down many of those schools, which focused on educating at-risk teens with troubled backgrounds. In at least two separate lawsuits, maverick schools faced allegations of inflating enrollment as part of a scheme to garner more government funding. The charters were eventually sold and the schools reorganized under new management. Critics suggest that Frank Biden touted his family name to promote the Mavericks Charter Schools. It was just one example of the Biden family actively benefiting from sharing a name with the Vice President. Now it could pose challenges for the former VP as he seeks the Democratic Party nomination for President, even when Joe Biden has not been accused of any wrongdoings. So, if, if, if that didn't make any sense to you, because it didn't really make any sense to me at first, basically, uh, Joe Biden, former vice president who is uh, running for Democratic uh, president in the 2020 election, he hasn't got it yet, but um, he's one of the big contenders to face Trump in the 2020 election. His brother, Frank Biden, who seems to be a somewhat educated guy, he was running a business beforehand in a, a realty, I believe, as I said previously, he was offered a job at a school solely because of this surname, and Frank Biden has just run with it. He said, uh, Bashed, it's a great asset having the same surname as the vice president. Um, It really helped him out. And the article goes on to mention how his son has used that surname to promote himself as well. And I just found this really interesting. We've talked about name dropping on the channel before, about how... um. People like name dropping to elevate themselves. <laughs> this is an instance of name dropping yourself, which is something I've never really heard about before. Using your own surname to promote your own doings. I just found that really interesting. But of course, this does pose an issue for uh, the for Joe Biden specifically because it's something that the media can latch on to, especially the fact that these schools Frank Biden was in control of were, were failing. Um, he got the job running these at-risk schools just because of his surname, more or less, it seems. People wanted to connect, hey, look, we have a Biden. Um, it's really interesting. And it, it, it's something easy for the media to latch on to, really. When, like, so, like, say the media who support Trump, Fox News, as we mentioned earlier, they could just go, look at this, look at this awful man doing an awful thing. Don't vote for this guy because his brother's no good. Um, it, it's just it's just an interesting little story I came across. And I thought it was something a bit different. It's not just something changing their name or a name being removed, as we mentioned previously. Um, I hope name news does carry on, you know. I hope I can always find some name-related news. Um, it just made sense this month to start this one because there's been so much name news. There's even name news stories I haven't covered um, will this continue for every month? I don't know, but we'll, we'll find out as time goes on. But we've got one last news story I want to share with you guys. My aim is to always bring five stories to the table. And luckily I found five for uh, this month. 
and this is a fun one and this comes from earthsky.org help name the next mars rover and the article goes nasa invites you to help choose the name for the next mars rover currently scheduled to launch in july or august 2020 the rover will land in mars's jazeera crater in february 2021 the call for votes opened online on january 21st and will remain open through january 27th you'll be voting for among nine finalist names drawn from winning entries in an essay contest from U.S. students in kindergarten through 12th grade. The students were asked to think of a name for NASA's Mars 2020 rover and write short essays about it. So the nine finalists are Endurance, Tenacity, Promise, Perseverance, Vision, Clarity, Ingenuity, Fortitude and Courage. NASA will announce the rover's new name and the student behind it in early March. (laughs) Kiddo naming contests. Um, naming contests have never been the same since Boaty McBoatface. Um, and I'm, I haven't seen any Rover McRover faces yet. And clearly other companies have learned from the Boaty McBoatface uh, palaver not to let people pick anything. Um, so there's these nine finalists here and they're fine. Um, I always think things like this are a bit cheeky. It's like, you get to pick the name. Um, you don't really get to pick the name. You get to pick one of nine names. It hasn't really got that freedom I'd expect from a naming competition. But Boaty McBoface <laughs> ruined that freedom in the most spectacular way possible. It, it's just amazing how long that has resonated for. The moment I read this article about naming a rover, that was the first thing that came to my Oh God, what ridiculous name they're going to pick for it. But it's just from these nine names. And it's a cool way to pick these nine names. It's not like NASA have said pick one of these they've let students pick them they've let student write essays get involved and that kid whether they are in kindergarten or in 12th grade that would be a really cool honor to have saying yeah i made up that name there were the names of the students on the website but i didn't share them i i didn't really believe in sharing the names of children on a platform like this that's just me being weird and of course i'll probably have a link to this article which has a link to the voting so you can go vote yourself uh, what name do I prefer? Do I like personally? Out of endurance, tenacity, promise, preservation, vision, clarity, ingenuity, fortitude, and courage, I like tenacity. Um, it's just a really fun word. Um, that yeah, I really like. To, it reminds me of um, it reminds me of like an old Southern belle. Oh, the tenacity. Um, maybe that's just me being silly. I don't know. Um, that's the one I would probably go with myself. Though you guys can vote as well, and I'm sure. Um, We'll find, I'll follow up this article in the March edition of Name News. I'll probably talk about what, what name ends up winning. So that'll be something to look forward to. So that's definitely a reason to listen to not next month's edition, but the month's after edition. Yeah, I think that's cool. And I also really enjoy how these sort of names that have been picked by the students follow up with Curiosity's name. I don't know if human emotions is the right word to use. Human instincts, possibly things humans feel but they, they fit the same curiosity it's kind of the same thing as all of these sort of things like promise or tenacity or vision or clarity like i said i don't know if emotions are the right word for it but these names fit very well with the previous name of curiosity and the curiosity rover is the coolest thing i i talked all about the curiosity rover in a video from ages ago about what we call a city on mars i think i even suggest that city could be called curiosity too why isn't this rover just being called Curiosity 2? That's what I want to know. Why wasn't I allowed to write an essay about this? Why is no one letting me pick names? Arr! It's probably for the best. I'm not a, I'm not a student uh, or American. It'll be like when Homer enters the power plant contest for kids when Frank Grimes makes him uh, apply for it. Oh, grimy. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's enough from myself, but I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on these news stories? And are there any name-related news stories I missed out on from the month just past? Message me about them on Patreon, leave a comment on the Patreon post for this episode, or even just tweet me at NameExplainYT, and I'll read out your messages at the top of the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast by adding the URL found on my Patreon page to your podcast player of choice. And thank you for listening and supporting Name Explain on Patreon. It really means a a lot honestly it, it, it helps out in such a huge way that's all from me but i look forward to talking to you guys again in next month's episode of name news goodbye and take care <laughs>